In this lecture, we'll discuss burns and skin cancer. A burn is a wound caused by agents such as heat, extreme cold, electricity, chemicals, radiation, etc. Um, we tend to classify burns based on how much of the tissue has been damaged and um, like the depth of the tissue damage as well. Burns result in fluid loss, loss of protective covering, and protein denaturation and cell death. So the worse your burns are, the more we are concerned about these three things in particular. The fluid loss uh, would also lead to an electrolyte imbalance. Um, anytime we mess with your electrolytes, we run the risk of um, interfering with nerve impulse conduction and um, muscle contraction, including your cardiac muscle. So none of that's very good. Um, loss of protective covering. So your skin, as long as it's nice and intact, remember, was a good barrier against infections. So if we have burned ourselves, we have basically opened up a pathway for infection. Um, so we tend to, if it's a really bad burn, we'll treat with sterile padding. The fluid loss will treat with IV fluids and then the protein denaturation and cell death. Um, if we break all of our proteins and we kill off all of our, well, not all of our cells, but you understand. If we kill our cells, um, we're going to need to start replacing those. In order to replace those, we are going to need to replace the proteins themselves that have not, um, to make up for the ones that were damaged and lost. So we can do that with a higher protein diet um, and or an IV drip. Now, the burns themselves, we said we're going to classify them based on um, how deep the burns go. The easiest burn to think about um, is probably like a sunburn. And this is where the, the UV radiation comes in. But um, a lot of times people forget that other things can quote unquote burn you. So you can have a chemical burn, you can um, have an electrical burn, even extreme cold can burn um like everybody knows hot burns but a lot of times we don't really correlate cold with burning um but it, like it, it hurts just as bad like it's just a different type of burn it's just a cold burn instead um first degree burns these are superficial burns they're only damaging the epidermis you are probably gonna develop erythema that red appearance um, it's probably gonna hurt a little bit but it's not gonna leave any permanent damage However, a second degree burn, we have burned all of your epidermis and we've got either part or all of the dermis as well. This is gonna be more painful. Um, you're probably gonna have blistering and it's very likely that you would also have scarring. Okay, so you can see the, the big blister in this picture. Okay. Um, if we continue with third degree burns, um, you have damaged all of your epidermis, all of your dermis, you could have even burned down into your hypodermis and even deep in t deeper tissues, your muscles, your bones, things like that. Um, this is uh, generally not painful at first because you've also destroyed your nerve endings here, your nerve fibers here as well. Um, the, the hurt will eventually come, but at, at first, you know, you've really just destroyed all of the things that recognize the pain. This typically results in major tissue damage. Um, this also leads to scarring. You are losing um, hair follicles. You are also losing all of the accessory organs that we mentioned in the last um, lecture. You're, you're probably not really going to have a chance to grow those back. And so you're also losing function here as well. Um, this also, we're concerned about dehydration because we've lost a lot of fluid this way, and this also greatly increases your risk of infections. So this is just an example of a, of a third degree burn. Looks more, um, more charred than anything. Fourth degree burns, um, you have damaged so many layers of tissue, including muscle. You've even potentially damaged um, all the way down to organs. This is an electrical burn, and this one, um, I believe this was a like a scalding a boiling water burn 
Um, like I said, it's easy to think of like, oh, a sunburn or, oh, a, you know, a fire burn. But there are other things that ca can cause just as much, if not more, damage to your body. Um, look, y'all, that's a bone. That's an arm bone, y'all. Like, this poor person has um, greatly damaged their arm. Now, we did mention, so just to reiterate, when we have bad burns, we are concerned about the fluid loss the possibility of infection because we've lost that protective covering um, and then the protein denaturation and the cell death associated with that. Um, if, it's, if the burns really are bad enough, um, obviously you'll need to be treated at a, a hospital. If it's really, really bad, um, particularly at a burn center that is designed specifically to treat the, the, the third and fourth degree burns. If you do have burns, um, on a good deal of your body. Medical professionals use the rule of nines to quickly estimate how much of your body has been burned. So each of the major areas of your body, we've divided you into 11 different segments. Um, each of them is 9% of your total body area. So the front of your head's 4.5%, the other, the back of your head's the other 4.5%. So your head, your whole head is 9%, okay? Same thing with your arm. The front of your arm is 4.5%, back of your arm is 4.5%. So one arm is 9%. So we just Add them up, right? If your chest and your abdominal region are all burned, that's 18% of your whole body right there. So we can quickly use this to estimate the extents of your burn um, and then use that information to determine your treatment options. Now, skin cancer. Um, we have a couple of specific types of skin cancer to mention. First is basal cell carcinoma. This is the most common skin cancer, but is the most common of all cancer types. So this one is pretty common. This arises from the keratinocytes in your stratum basal layer of your epidermis. The skin that is regularly exposed to UV radiation is the most at risk. Okay, so think of like your face, your arms, um, maybe even the tops of your feet if you just wear flip-flops a lot, just things like that. These spots appear as little nodules with a little uh, indentation, a little crater in the center. These rarely metastasize to other tissues, um, which is good. So metastasis um, is always bad. So metastasis, keep in mind, is the spreading of cancer throughout, um, throughout your body to other places in your body. These are um, easy to remove surgically because they don't metastasize. So we can just go in, we can cut this spot out um, we can check up on you later and hopefully you're good to go. Squamous cell carcinoma. Um, this comes, this is the second most common skin cancer. This one comes from your stratum spinosum. So stratum spinosum squamous. Lots of S's there. These, um, these look a little bit different. Okay, so, so this one's um, a little bit more round, kind of um, pinky reddish color. This one um, is kind of scaly. Uh, it's got kind of a plaqued appearance to it. It could even ulcerate and bleed. Okay, you find these a lot on your head and neck regions. These are more likely to metastasize, okay, compared to the basal cell. Um, but surgical removal can still be useful. So we can still go in here, cut this out, check up on you, um, and then hopefully you're good to go. Now, the last one we're going to mention is malignant melanoma. This is a different type of cancer altogether. The first two we mentioned were cancers of your keratinocytes. This is the cancer of your melanocytes. Okay. This one is especially unpleasant because this one um, metastasizes very readily and spreads and can spread very quickly. Um, the melanocytes, they kind of have these little octopus arms that will um, dig down into the dermis to get to the blood vessels, and that's how they spread to the other tissues. Um, so if caught early, we can surgically remove them, but um, because this is more of a, a, a worse cancer, you'll also, it's likely that you'll have to maybe undergo a radiation treatment, a chemotherapy treatment, something else besides just cutting out the spot itself. Uh, because this one is so nasty, there are rules <laughs> to help you um, distinguish uh, a skin cancer from a normal mole. Um, 
you know, and A, B, C, D, E's, everyone knows their A, B, C's, right? So asymmetry, border, color, diameter, and the evolving. So asymmetrical shape, so it's not just one nice round circle. The two sides don't match, okay? Um, and that also goes with border irregularity, and so it's not just one smooth round circle. It's, it's bumpy, it's wavy, um, it just kind of looks funny. The color is usually very dark. So remember, these are melanocytes. These are your uh, pigment producing cells. So it should make sense. These are very dark. And then the diameter, um, these tend to be larger than six millimeters, which is about the size of a pencil eraser for um, just for something to compare that to. And then evolving, they change the shape, the size, the coloration. These change over time. So that's something to kind of be familiar with as well. Um, if in doubt, go to your doctor. Okay, um, no self-diagnosing y'all. If in doubt, go to a medical professional.